Heroism can be defined many ways, but typically it involves bravely saving the day with little concern for one's own well-being, and above all else, just straight up not killing the good guys, right? Well, though these following heroes all had good intentions one way or another, their acts largely ended up condemning thousands or even millions of regular harmless folk to brutal deaths, a fact that some of these games would perhaps prefer you not to think about so much. With that in mind, and then I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 video game heroes that got everyone killed. Number 10, Joel The Last of Us. The ending to The Last of Us is one of the most brilliantly polarizing in video game history. As protagonist, Joel decides to shoot his way through a Firefly hospital in order to rescue Ellie, who is being prepped for experimental surgery. With Ellie being immune to a zombie-like virus, the Fireflies' hope was that removing her infected brain would allow them to synthesize a cure, but with there being no guarantee of success, Joel instead decided to retrieve Ellie and slay anyone who got in his way. To make matters worse, he then lied to Ellie about what happened, insisting that the Fireflies found other immune people to experiment upon and that their attempts to create a cure failed. Ouch. While there's indeed no guarantee that the Fireflies' experiment would have created a cure, it was certainly possible. And so by saving Ellie, effectively his surrogate daughter at that point, Joel may well have selfishly doomed humanity. What we know for sure though is that Joel's climactic rampage teed up his own demise, as in The Last of Us Part 2 he gets brutally murdered by Abby, the daughter of the doctor that he killed at the end of the first game while escaping. Joel's actions are absolutely understandable on a human level, but that doesn't mean they weren't overpoweringly self-serving in obliterating a potential cure. Number 9, Kratos, God of War. With God of War's Kratos, we're clearly using the term hero pretty loosely here, because in his original iteration, he's really a tragically doomed anti-hero at best, if not a straight-up mass murderer. In the original game, Kratos made a deal with the God of War Ares to serve under him in exchange for sparing his life during battle and granting him godlike powers. Kratos was then tricked into killing his own wife and daughter, and it's also made clear that he killed a lot of people while serving this god prior to this. He even tellingly says, quote, I killed many who were deserving and many who were not, end quote. From here, Kratos ends up slaughtering over two dozen gods, including Ares, throughout the series. In many cases, this caused an untold amount of indirect death as well, such as when he killed Poseidon and flooded the Mediterranean, murdered Helios and plunged Greece into darkness, and unleashed a plague by slaughtering slaughtering Hermes. By the end of God of War 3, Kratos has literally destroyed an entire mythology. Number 8, Venom Snake, Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Pain. Metal Gear Solid 5's first Africa set mission sees a Venom Snake sabotaging an oil field, which has been polluting the local water supply with oil and preventing the nearby villagers from drinking it. Yet later in the game, we learn that the oil was being intentionally leaked into the local water because said water was contaminated with ExoF's vocal cord parasites, which would ultimately kill anyone who drank the water and became infected. Villain Skullface used the area as a test for a variant of the parasite, and so when Snake stopped the oil leak, the locals were again able to consume this water. This caused the infection to spread throughout the area and eventually even reach Snake's HQ at Mother Base, where he was forced to execute any of his own soldiers infected with the parasite in order to prevent it from spreading to the wider world. So yeah, Snake clearly had the best of intentions when he went to shut down the oil field, but in turn, he did inadvertently get a lot of people killed and almost caused a global catastrophe. Number 7, Alex Mercer, Prototype. Prototype pits the player as Alex Mercer, an amnesiac who wakes up in a lab and soon discovers that he has an array of awesome mutant powers, such as super strength, super speed, and the ability to consume anyone to obtain their memories and appearance. Yeah, the last one stands out, doesn't it? The game primarily revolves around Alex's quest to figure out out his past and stop an outbreak of the Black Knight virus, which transforms the infected into grotesque monsters. We eventually learn that the outbreak was actually caused by Alex himself, who, due to his research getting shuttered and a hit being ordered on his life, smashed a vial of black light at Penn Station, spreading it throughout the burrow and infecting himself with it also, causing his superhero transformation. The huge loss of life that Alex's act causes speaks for itself, transforming a massive number of Manhattan's 1.5 
5 million residents into hideous creatures. Intriguingly, Prototype 2 actually leans fully into the impact of Alex's actions, recasting him as the villain pursued by a new hero, James Heller, whose family was killed by the Blacklight outbreak. Number 6. Private Joseph Allen, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2's controversial No Russian mission sees Private First Class Joseph Allen going undercover with terrorist Vladimir Makarov, as they prepare to carry out a mass shooting at a Moscow airport. Though players don't have to shoot any civilians themselves, and in fact the entire mission is skippable, you do have to walk through the airport while your so-called comrades slaughter dozens and dozens of innocent people. But the rub comes at the end of the mission when Makarov reveals that he knows Alan is working undercover and promptly shoots him dead. More to the point, Makarov leaves Alan's corpse at the airport, thereby implicating the US in the airport attack and effectively kickstarts World War 3. Now, Alan of course can't be entirely blamed for this, admittedly it was of course Makarov's plan to execute a false flag operation which framed him, but even so, by being in the wrong place at the wrong time, his death and the discovery of his body set in motion a global conflict which killed tens of millions. Number 5, Nathan Drake, Uncharted. How many lives do you think could have been saved if Nathan Drake just stayed home during the Uncharted franchise? Well, in the first three games alone, IGN suggested his body count totaled at least 1,829. Basically, if you're not a close personal friend or family member of Nate's, you're fair game to be shot or blown up by the intrepid treasure hunter should you prove to be the faintest obstacle to his precious loot. The over-the-odds bloodthirstiness of Uncharted's protagonist is especially odd given Nate's charming roguish persona. Enough so that the series is often cited as a textbook example of ludo-narrative dissonance, that being a disconnect between gameplay and story in video games. Hilariously, Uncharted 4 Thief's End even includes a trophy entitled Ludo Narrative Dissonance, which is unlocked by killing 1,000 enemies. So yeah, you kind of have to respect Naughty Dog's willingness to poke fun at themselves here, even if Nate's penchant for ultraviolence remains a puzzling aspect of the franchise for many. Number 4, Commander Shepard, Mass Effect 3. Mass Effect 3's destroy ending involves Commander Shepard destroying the mass relays, the ancient machines which facilitate faster than light travel. And by destroying the relays, Shepard ensures that the alien races fighting the Reapers in Sol, that's Earth's solar system, are now effectively stranded there. It goes without saying then that the many alien species stuck on Earth wouldn't be much happy about that, especially those which require specific nutrients in order to survive. Beyond that, most species wouldn't live long enough to make the arduous journey home using their own faster than light drives, nor have the fuel to get there in the first place. Combine all of this with the relative scarcity of resources on Earth, and Shepard's destruction of the mass relays would almost certainly result in massive conflicts and death on and around Earth, so yeah, well done, Shep. Number 3, Cole McGrath, Infamous 2. Whichever ending you choose in Infamous 2, protagonist Cole McGrath ends up getting an insane number of people killed. The game's so-called good ending sees Cole deciding to activate the Ray Field Inhibitor, which kills the overwhelming majority of the living superhumans, aka conduits, including Cole himself. Though no precise body count has ever been given, this could theoretically number in the tens of millions. The evil ending, though, is on a whole other level entirely, with Cole betraying humanity and preparing to build a conduit heaven on Earth. Cole activates dormant conduits while a plague spreads that will kill off most non-conduits, likely causing billions of deaths in the long run. So yeah, no matter what you choose, some people are gonna have it pretty rough. Number 2, Lara Croft Shadow of the Tomb Raider The Tomb Raider reboot trilogy certainly attempted to reckon with Lara Croft's ultra-violent mass murdering ways, while Shadow of the Tomb Raider trained its focus on Lara's problematic nature as a globe-trotting treasure hunter who, let's be honest, just steals shiny stuff from ancient civilizations. This is broached early on in the game when Lara locates the dagger of Chak Chell, and despite nearby murals warning of apocalyptic events, she just takes the dagger anyway, under the flimsy justification of stopping paramilitary outfit Trinity from grabbing it first. However, this act of pilfering ends up triggering an event called the Cleansing, whereby a gigantic tsunami floods the Mexican island, causing an innumerable amount of damage and life lost, including a young boy who perishes right before Lara's very eyes. The game is very much concerned with Lara's journey to atone for her actions, which predictably does kind of descend into a white saviour narrative in which she kills many, many more people in the quest for so-called redemption. As Wired's review so brilliantly put it, quote, hundreds of people die in this game to teach Lara Croft a lesson in humility. 
end quote. Number one, Captain Martin Walker, Spec Ops The Line. Spec Ops The Line's protagonist, Captain Martin Walker, is the living embodiment of the phrase, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. In the game, Walker heads to a storm-wrecked war-torn Dubai as part of a covert three-man team intending to help rescue stranded refugees and eliminate a rogue PTSD-riddled US Army colonel called John Conrad, who is causing chaos in the region. But things quickly go from bad to worse when Walker authorizes a white phosphorus attack on an apparent enemy position, which actually ends up melting 47 civilians instead. Walker is also manipulated into destroying Dubai's remaining water supply by the CIA, which surely seals the fate of anyone left in the city, gets his teammates Adams and Lugo killed, and depending on the ending you get, a now insane Walker might actually mow down the army patrol sent to retrieve him. But the real kicker? Well, if the rest of the world ever finds out about Walker's actions in Dubai, there's the very real possibility it would spark a major conflict between the Middle East and the US, incurring mass casualties in the process. In the very least, Walker's efforts to improve the situation in the city backfired spectacularly. So that's our list. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. What do you think about these so-called video game heroes and the already mass murderers I missed off here? While you're down there as well, could you please give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't though, I've been Josh. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.